fellow students, welcome back. In today's lecture, we're going to start on a brand new topic, the lymphatic system. The primary purpose of the lymphatic system, or the primary function of the lymphatic system, is to bring tissue fluid back to the circulatory system. This is the function I'll be explaining today. In order to do this, we'll need three components. We'll need to draw tissue and tissue cells. We'll need to draw a capillary bed, which is part of the circulatory system. And we'll need to draw the primary component of the lymphatic system, lymphatic vessels. First, we'll draw all of the components. Then we'll look at each of them in turn. Let's draw these components. Here we have the components of the lymphatic system. We have the tissue cells here. We have the capillary bed here. We have an arterial, a venule, a metal arterial, a thoroughfare channel, and the capillary bed itself. And we also have lymph vessels. Now let's explain what the lymphatic system does. We'll get rid of the lymphatic vessels and the capillary bed first. Shown here are our tissue cells. All tissue cells need a blood supply so that they can receive oxygen and get rid of waste. And so that is the purpose of the capillary bed. Shown here is our capillary bed. Blood plasma leaves the capillary bed to nourish the tissue. Each day, about 20 liters of blood plasma leaves the circulatory system to become tissue fluid. Approximately 17 liters of this tissue fluid is reabsorbed by the circulatory system. This leaves about 3 liters of tissue fluid that remains in the tissue, or about 15%. If this tissue fluid were to remain in the tissues, the tissues would become swollen with tissue fluid. This condition is known as edema, and the tissue is said to be edematous. This condition is prevented by the lymphatic system. Let's now represent the lymphatic vessels of the lymphatic system. Shown here in green are our lymphatic vessels. The tissue fluid that is not returned to the circulatory system enters these lymphatic vessels. This tissue fluid eventually makes its way back to the circulatory system. Once this tissue fluid enters the lymphatic vessels, it is now called lymph. So the tissue fluid that's found within the lymphatic vessels is known as lymph. So this is the primary function of the lymphatic system, the return of tissue fluid back to the circulatory system. Let's label a few components here. Let's name them first, and then we'll label them. Here we have an arteriole, a metal arteriole, a thoroughfare channel, a venule, tissue here. These, these are tissue cells. These are lymphatic vessels. And uh, the capillary bed and the lymphatic bed. Just to recap, we have tissue. The tissue needs to be nourished with tissue fluid that's provided by the circulatory system. The blood travels into the capillary bed, and the blood plasma leaves the capillary bed and enters the tissue. At this point, the blood plasma is known as tissue fluid or interstitial fluid. Approximately 20 liters of blood plasma enters the tissues every day, and about 17 liters is returned to the circulatory system. This leaves about 3 liters or about 15% of the tissue fluid remaining in the tissue. If this were to remain, we have a condition known as edema, or the tissue will become edematous. To correct this problem, we have the lymphatic system. The remaining 3 liters or 15% of the tissue fluid enters the lymphatic vessels, and these lymphatic vessels eventually make their way back to the circulatory system, returning all of this fluid to the circulatory system. And this is the primary function of the lymphatic system. And that concludes this first lecture on the lymphatic system.